When Habakkuk understood God's plan, he rejoiced in the Lord God. He praised God for the great power and holiness. The prophet saw God's plan in the punishment of Judah. At the, I will be joyful in God my Savior. Habakkuk 3.18 Hi everyone, this is Tammy Becker. Thank you for joining me today as we do a quick review of the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk wrote the book of the Bible himself. And Habakkuk is in the prophecy division of the Old Testament. It is the eighth book of the Minor Prophets and it's the 35th book of the Old Testament. Now Habakkuk's title means embrace or the one who embraces. Habakkuk chose to embrace or hold on to God no matter what happened to his nation. So let's get started. Towards the end of the kingdom of Judah, things had gone from bad to worse. Good King Josiah had been killed in battle and all the reforms he put into place during his reign were quickly perverted by a rapid succession of bad kings, three sons and a grandson. This unchecked wickedness causes Habakkuk, a little known prophet, you know, he was a contemporary of Jeremiah, to question God's silence and apparent lack of judgment in purging his covenant people. So like Job, Habakkuk asks why. The second time the prophet asks this, God answers with a torrent of proof and predictions. Habakkuk finally catches a glimpse of the character and the nature of God, and in response can only stand back in awe in praise of him. So let's dive into chapters 1 and 2. Habakkuk has a problem with understanding God's way. A lot of us do, right? I mean, it's normal. So why, God, are you allowing the wicked and Judah to go unpunished, he asks. So God gives an answer to the prophet that he doesn't expect. God will use the Babylonians to punish Judah. Now Habakkuk has an even bigger problem. How can you, the righteous judge, punish Judah through a nation that is even more wicked? So God answers back that he is aware of the Babylonian sin and assures that the Babylonians will not escape his terrible judgment. But Judah says God is guilty of similar offenses and stands under the same condemnation. The Lord concludes his answer to Habakkuk with a statement affirming his sovereign majesty. The Lord is in the holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him, Habakkuk 2.20. All right, let's jump into chapter 3. It's a quick, quick book. The prophet began this short book by questioning God, but now he concludes with a psalm or a song of praise. He understands and acknowledges God's wisdom and the coming invasion by the Babylonians. The thought of judgment from an evil nation just tears him up, you know, but he's going to trust in God. And why not? God's faithful, creative, and redemptive, and he works on the part of the Jewish people and should give the prophet confidence in the divine purpose and a continued hope even now, even when he would otherwise despair. All right, let's connect Jesus and Habakkuk. Habakkuk realizes that God is in control of the universe. Even though Habakkuk doesn't understand it, he learns that he can trust in God to do what he says he will do. God's plans will take place when the time is right. God sent Jesus at just the right time so that we can receive salvation and be part of God's family. Habakkuk is what many people today would term a free spirit. He liked to venture outside the box and wrestle with issues that tested his faith. He looked around and he saw the people of Judah in blatant sin with no restraints. Injustice was widespread. Habakkuk was open 
and honestly directs his concerns to God and waits to see how God responds to his probing questions. God says he will judge the people of Judah and to Habakkuk's surprise. God says he will use wicked Babylon as his instrument of judgment. So, life lessons that we can learn from Habakkuk. Number one, faith is not a one-time act. It is a way of life. Number two, you are called to trust God even when life seems impossible and incomprehensible. Number three, the wicked may appear to be victorious, but ultimately our righteous God will punish them. Number four, God's ways are not our ways. They are beyond our understanding. In summary today, how does this fit into your life? The core of Habakkuk's message resides in the call to trust God. The just shall live by faith, Habakkuk 2.4. God is at work in the lives of his people, even when it seems as evil has triumphed, because God is righteous and sovereign. He will not let injustice continue forever. At times, you may think that God's ways seem incomprehensible, but just as he was in control of Habakkuk's days, he is still in control today. Your responsibility is not to question God's actions or what seems like lack of action. Your responsibility is to gain a better understanding of God's character. A true believer, one declared righteous by God, will steadfastly preserve in faith in spite of what is happening to him or to others. He understands and trusts the sovereign God who does only that what is right. So in closing, remember the next time you are in trouble, bring your problems directly to God. Habakkuk did this by praying. Believe in trusting God. Habakkuk did this by responding in faith. Be encouraged. Habakkuk went from doubt to faith. Be sure to realize the problem is never with God. Habakkuk's problems was limited by understanding of God's ways. So that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed this quick study of Habakkuk, and I hope that you take these life lessons to heart. Take them throughout the week as you study the Word of God and learn more about what He can do in your life to bring you joy and blessing. Be sure, please, to subscribe to my channel and please hit my bell so you get the notifications and you can come back here next Wednesday when we drop the next episode of another very teeny weeny chapter, Zephaniah. And don't forget to come study all these um, chapters of the Bible with us in our private Facebook group, Girl Read Your Bible. Check out my podcast, Almighty God and Gospel Girl Podcast. We host it on Anchor, but it's on any of your favorite platforms. And don't forget to stop by and see us on the web at www.youministries.com. That's it for this week. Have a blessed week, and I'll see you back next week. This is Tammy Becker. Bye.